<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Sunday with Mike. This will be our final show forever. We're not going to do any more. This is it. This is the final one. So I wanted to say goodbye and thank you all very, very much for all of your support. I'm just kidding. We're not going anywhere <laughs> on today's show. We're going to cover utility generators, three-point lighting, some DJ etiquette tips, and some useful commands on Facebook that I think you might find handy. Grab some coffee and join me. I'll be right back. And welcome back. Today, I wanted to share a story with you as some general advice when it comes to playing music uh, from your laptop using a utility generator. So first of all, what am I calling a utility generator? My description is any portable generator that you could put into the back of a pickup truck is the kind of device that I'm talking about. Here's an assortment of products by many different companies, and all of these are utility grade generators. They all produce voltage and frequency in the general neighborhood of what you need, which is either 118 volts and 60 hertz if you're in the US, or if you're outside the US, you're probably looking for 220 volts and 50 hertz. No matter where you are in the world, we all share the same problem. These type of utility generators are not good enough for your sensitive electronics. Oh sure, we've all used them in a pinch and we've gotten away with it, and now you want to say that I've lost my mind and I don't know what I'm talking about. But hang on just a minute, not quite so fast. So why am I saying all of this? Well, let's be much more specific. The voltage and the frequency of these generators are anything but steady and reliable. The voltage swings are tolerable with most of your electronics equipment, but a steady frequency is critical. This is where these types of generators fail miserably. If you notice on this chart, the blue line represents a standard wall outlet that would give you rock solid 60 cycles or 50 cycles per second. The red indicates what you expect to find and see on utility generators. And you can see that it's anything but steady, right? And that's the problem. Your electronics does not like this stuff one bit. They do make a more serious type of generator, a commercial generator, but these come with their own trailers and they look a lot like this one. They also make something called an entertainment generator, and it has the correct voltages and frequencies being created. These are much more expensive, and you see these on large production uh, units uh, in shows and concerts and stuff. So my point is this. Don't assume that running your electronics from a generator isn't damaging your equipment, because in most cases, it really is. Just last weekend, I had to play from a utility generator and it went out several times during the event. My stomach was turning every time I heard this awful noise coming from my speaker as they were just dying from a lack of power. Finally, I got them to plug me into an outlet and all was well again. Right up until the end of the night when the bartender asked me if I was going to deduct my quote downtime, end quote, when I wasn't playing from their bill. This was a wedding on private property and I have no idea who this person was, but she insisted that I should have had a battery backup for all of my gear. I'm really grateful that she wasn't my client and I normally don't get my electronics advice from a bartender, so I just smiled and walked away. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool.
As more and more DJs are doing video shoots for YouTube and the Video Cave, the other Facebook group, uh, etc., I thought that I would share some of my lighting experiences with you when dealing with video. We had to learn quite a bit to do this show because video was not my thing and it's amazingly bright when you're uh, trying to record. So there are plenty of YouTube videos out there on lighting, but one of the most common terms that you're going to run into is called three-point lighting. Um, let's break this down a little bit so it makes more sense. So we have a light that's called a key light, and as the name implies, it is the main light on the subject that's being recorded. The second most important light is called the fill light, and it's located about twice the distance from the subject as the key light is. If you'll notice in this diagram, they are about 30 to 45 degrees from the front of the subject, so they're not straight on, right? They're at an angle coming to the subject that's being recorded. And then lastly, we have what's called the backlight. And this is a light that's located behind your subject, and it helps to create an outline on the subject and separate them from the background. So in our case, our backlight is the uplights that you see behind me, right? So as you play around with the position and the intensity of the lights, you'll see different results. Some will be better, some will be worse. And the other thing that helps to soften the lighting and kind of break it up a little bit is something called diffusers. And they help to spread the source of the light out and eliminate those really bright hot spots, especially on your nose and your cheeks. Uh, so trust me on this one, video lighting is a lot harder to do and master than it looks like. And as I learn more, our shows have improved and continue uh, we continue to watch videos and try to learn even more tricks to the trade as we go. I did learn a trick from a friend of mine, and it has paid dividends over and over again. His homemade diffuser is to grab a bounce dryer sheet and place them one at a time over your light until it's diffused the way that you want it to be. It just breaks down the light and it keeps making it softer and softer with each sheet. So it's amazing how much a dryer sheet can spread out your light source. So your homework assignment is to test this out. I want you to grab a dryer sheet and place it in front of a desk lamp facing a wall and see how much it spreads the light around and breaks up that hot spot. So today I wanted to touch on DJ etiquette. I don't have a rule book for you. I just recently read a post and it was just like, I need to talk about this. Um, there was a DJ who didn't spend his hard earned money to invest in all of the things needed to do a bridal show properly. Um, and so he decided on his way home that he would just stop by and put cards on everyone's windshield in the parking lot. To him, this was a stroke of genius. To anyone else, including the vendors who paid their hard-earned money, got dressed, created an attractive booth for the visitors, and handed out printed materials that they paid for, was a huge slap in the face. He got fussed at personally, and then that's why he posted the, uh, the, the post asking, you know, should he have done that or whatnot. Um, and I'm really surprised that he didn't get banned from the property for doing it. I've said over and over again on these shows, for the most part, that you're on private property when you're doing events. This bridal show was on private property. He wasn't a guest or an attendee or an invited vendor, so he had no business being there, but he was trying to take advantage of a situation and put one over on the system. So if you want to advertise your business, that's great, but do it the right way. For example, this guy, does this guy stand at a busy intersection and pass out his cards to all of the cars as they stop at the red light? Of course not. But that would actually be better than trying to do what he did as far as everyone else is concerned. That's the kicker. You know, it's bad for everyone else but him. 
So it's a targeted audience. It's for wedding clients. And he thought it was a smart move. I get his point, And to his defense, uh, it was. But sometimes taking shortcuts are going to backfire on you. And that's exactly what happened here. I pay for and promoted myself in many bridal shows um, over the years. And every time it's over, someone has hit the parking lot with their printed materials. This guy was not the first or the last person to do this. The bridal show normally will permanently ban anyone that does this, but it still doesn't stop them. Why? Because they don't see anything wrong with it and they weren't going to spend their money to be in the bridal show anyway. So I'm asking you this. How would you feel if you spent $1,000 plus of your money to promote your DJ business and you walked out to find that some other DJ has left their cards all over the parking lot? Yeah, I feel that way too. The bottom line is don't be that guy. Be a leader and do things the right way. Even if it's not the quickest or the shortest path, you'll get a lot more respect from your venues, clients, and peers by doing so. Once in a while, I find a useful feature on Facebook that I'd like to share, and today's little gem is called Unfollow. What makes this so great is that if someone is getting on your nerves, you can unfollow them without unfriending them. And that's a big difference, right? So I've recently discovered a couple of other commands. One's called snooze so-and-so for 30 days, uh, which is really handy when the politics crank up. Uh, and that allows them some time to stop doing whatever it is they're doing that's getting on your nerves. Sometimes you'll comment on a post and then you get updates every time somebody else makes a comment and eventually it'll start to get old and get on your nerves. Well, if you touch those three little dots and, and uh, select the turn off notifications, poof, no more notifications and your life is good again. But what if you see a post that you find interesting and you want to follow it, but you don't necessarily want to make a comment. You can do that too. Um, a lot of people would type follow and, you know, interesting and little things just so that they would start getting the updates, but now you don't even have to do that. So when you see a post that's interesting and you want to follow along, then all you have to do is hit the little, the three little dots and then select turn on notifications. And then now you'll be alerted every single time someone makes a comment to that post. So that's going to be our show for today. But before we go any further, we would like to wish you all a happy Easter. And of course, this is not our last show. That was my April Fool's joke because it's April 1st. So please share the show with your friends and give me your thoughts down in the comments section. And be sure to give us a thumbs up. Right, John Bragg? Thumbs up all shows. Thank you very much. We're saving a seat for everybody in the Sunday with Mike Facebook group, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.